Over the last couple of months, we converted this Subaru Levorg to EJ25 and manual using parts from a crashed STI, and it's a wagon that Subaru never made, but should have. But the road was paved by the original OG, which is Supergramps. 3.6 litre, six cylinder, powered by ethanol. This is a car that helped define the Mighty Car Mods channel. And as such, we're very excited to reveal the all new Supergramps poster, which we will autograph and send to you anywhere in the world. It's available right now, but today, people, it's time to dive into the wagon life with Supergramps and the STI LeVorg. This is Supergramps. It's a 2003 Subaru Liberty GT. It exists because my original Subaru wagon known as Gramps got left out in a rainstorm and flooded. So I reshelled the driveline into a cheap, blue, high kilometre soccer mum car I got from Al. And then he and Miles helped us fit the driveline to the new shell. I tried my luck with paint again, this time without a rainstorm, we made a custom colour called Squid Juice and with it sprayed on, the car looked excellent. After daily driving it for a while, I realised it was actually by far the fastest and most capable car I owned, so I took it to the track. Going temperature high, just going to send it for this one, see what kind of time I can get, and then cool right down. Danger to manifold! Yeah! 151! Yes! Choosing not to destroy it by thrashing it constantly on the racetrack, I retired it back to daily duties, getting groceries and towing stuff around. Subaru LeVorgs caught my eye when I realised that they are basically an updated Liberty with a different name. The problem is they all came out as automatic and not very fast. So I got a cheap one and we rolled the dice with a crashed STI, hoping all the parts would transfer across. A few weeks later we'd extracted the driveline from the STI and got it all bolted into the LeVorg. Once it worked we started modifying and then took it out to the skid pan to see what it was capable of. I was so thrilled with how well it drove. We threw another round of mods at it for more power, better handling and looks. It made 205 kilowatts with a stock turbo, then we completely reworked the interior, added a stereo and got it engineered and registered. The result is an excellent street car. It's modern, practical and it's a brilliant car to drive. But is it anywhere as good as the original Supergrams? Today, we find out. So that's a little bit of history about each of these builds and now we have these two mad modified and very unique Subarus sitting here in Super Garage and today we're going to be going through a bunch of aspects of each of the cars. We're going to be looking at exterior, interior, performance, we're going to be driving both of the cars and hopefully at the end of this video we'll be able to crown one of these as the ultimate Mighty Car Mods Subaru Super Wagon. Now why do people love wagons so much? I reckon practicality and handling. When you think of a twisty B road or country road or a racetrack, do you think of getting in an SUV? Do you think of getting in a dual cab ute? Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, look, obviously people do lots of mods on dual cab utes and because we are the best four wheel driving channel in the world, we have been doing a bunch of work on our Hilux. It is a car that can do a lot of things well, but dual cab ute also do a lot of things not so well. And performance driving on twisty roads and track days is a uh, they're normally they towing just, the car, they not just driving. can't do it is the truth. So what you get with one of these is you can do a track day, you can put your stuff in it, you've got a big boot, you've got roof pods, you can tow things. You do have that practicality that means it fits with your life, but also is a car and you can just have the one car that you can go to a track day, you can go to the drags, you can go to a mad country road and have a really, really good time. So that I think is why these things are absolute standouts. FYI, pertinent to this story, my first car after my Mini and Camaro was a VL Commodore station wagon. That's the last time I've had a station wagon. It was uh, <laughs> over 20 years ago. But anyway, let's jump into the Subaru Super Wagon build off. We're going to start with the exterior. This is a Subaru Liberty. Elsewhere in the world, it's known as a Legacy. This is a BP. They've been making a Legacy since the late 80s and 1989, and it was a very progressive change. This is the fourth generation, a very popular one, although the Outbacks, which is the jacked up and slightly bigger version, actually took away a lot of the Legacy sales around the world. Um, in terms of what it looks like, I mean, it's kind of fat for its age, I guess. It's not sort of fat as the Lavore, but it does have the typical bonnet scoop. The designs of the Liberty and Legacy was always a bit more safe than the WRX, even though the chassis was similar, it was also slightly bigger. 
Um, in terms of the styling, I guess it's of, the, of its era, which is 2003, which means they probably started thinking about this thing and what it was going to look like back in the 90s. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this car here is considered a large car. This here is built on the same platform as the Impreza and WRX, which is a small car, but as is the nature, people, everything is getting bigger. So this here is actually, this is bigger than that, isn't it? Uh, like, yeah, like this so is slightly. actually a bigger car, just yeah. by a tiny bit. Now, around this era, 2014's when they started making these, everything started getting sharper. So those big smiley mouths that you're seeing on the front of cars turned into Skeletor's groaning mouth instead. So these big ah uh, kind of look, everything is sharper. There's way more angle to it. Really fat, really low, a little bit more what we call robot vomit, which is kind of just machines to stick and stuff anywhere they think. But it's when you look at this and you see these angles, the sharp lines, this kind of press down the door here, which is a bit softer on this car, it actually does start to make Super Gramps look like its age, which is a car that was designed over 20 years ago. So as a general rule, we're gonna give some rough numbers. Out of 10, I'm gonna give this look eight. I reckon it actually yep. looks pretty good. Yep. Super Gramps, I'm gonna give a six. It looks fat, it looks wide, it looks nice, but it just is starting to look its yep. age, which is old. And I'd have to agree, I reckon this, I really like how this looks. I think it looks really sharp, angular and chunky and has a really good presence. Super Gramps is exactly starting to look its age and for its time, it looked kind of tough, but li liberties and legacies were always a softer thing because this is based on the same platform as a WRX and an STI, because everything fits it, it has way more aggressive looks. So same score? Same score. Great, all right, let's move on to interior, people. Uh, I feel bad saying it, Marty. It feels like I'm in a taxi. Oh, really? It actually does feel <laughs> a bit grot. There's some aspects of the inside which is really nice, like the headlining, which yeah. is custom. Yeah. I love a black headlining. Same. I like to feel like I'm kind of really encapsulated in it. That's really nice, but the rest of it, it's just, it's cheap. I, I, I don't care about the whole cheap versus expensive interior, yeah. except for when the cheapness is actually coming through in damage, like all the cracks through everything. Well, this was their flagship model. It was their fancy model. It was supposed to be premium. This is a premium interior. Oh. Leather, I mean, originally it was leather seats they kind of get worn out. Everything is worn out and the dashes are that bad that they actually record them and this is the third dash this car's had and they've all cracked and turned white. Wow. So it's just, it has not withstood the test of time and this car's been looked after and loved and garaged and everything and it still looks like rubbish after all this time. It so looks, it looks it's, terrible. It's not, it's not great. I think they actually messed up with this particular model and um, yeah. Look, I would give the interior three, but I know that sounds brutal, but I'm giving an extra one point for the Recaros that came <laughs> via uh, my Sylvia and then via Too Sexy, yep. because even though that has nothing to do with Subaru, we're still we're looking at wagon versus wagon. Yeah. And that said, I'm giving that an extra one. So, um, I mean, these are probably worth another five. But let's let's just be uh, let's just be serious for a second. Because of this, I'm giving it a four, dude. Yeah. A four out of ten. Right. Sorry, man. No, I feel bad. That's okay. I'm giving it a five. It's got some nice things like you know climate control and and they've tried, but they just have not withstood the test of time. If you get other cars from the same year like 2003, they'll look way better than this. Yep. So, five. Inside the Lavorg with an STI interior swap, this is a really nice place to be. People always use Volkswagen Golfs as kind of the litmus test of like, it's not as good as a Golf, it's not. I think this is the kind of the Mark 7 yeah. Golf. There's knobs, buttons, everything that you want. One of the criticisms of the Mark 8 is everything went too digital. Yeah. This here, everything's right where you want it. Look, there's a lot of knobs on the steering wheel and a couple of knobs are sitting in the car right now, mate. <laughs> so what the first thing you notice is the dash kind of goes away from you. So we're in a slightly different seating position to that car, but the car is actually physically bigger. So we've got a little bit more room. It feels a little bit more open and airy. It, it definitely has like a plastic feel. They went away from whatever was on those old dashes, that sort of soft touch stuff, which failed. And they've gone to this sort of more plasticky stuff, which people sometimes complain about, but I actually think is good and practical and easy to keep clean and is going to withstand the test of time. All the stuff that's in here is really easy to see. Um, good positions, good good driving positions. I think it's I think it's definitely a step up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And look, with these things, I mean, look, we're obviously just doing this for a bit of fun and to try and get our own heads around it. You could say you give it an eight out of ten, which is what I'm giving the interior, by the way. And someone could go, but it's not as nice as a Bugatti. It's not as good as a whatever. Yeah. The thing is, it's functional. It's clean. It's nice. It works. None of it's broken for what it is. Uh, in its other form, I would have given it like a six. In yeah. its Lavorg form, you definitely get another couple of points. Better seats, leather. I'm giving it eight out of ten. I'm going to give it a seven just because I think. They have dropped the quality of it compared to what they went did with the with Supergrams and that era, but I actually think it's going to be more durable. It just doesn't look quite as luxury as that did when it first came out. 
When it comes to the technology in Supergramps, it is stark at best. The highlight, of course, is the Haltech IC7, which is a dash, which basically comes up with all of the different operating information about the car. You can set that up in lots of different screens. That has nothing to do with Subaru, but we still got to give it a couple of points because that is in here. We've also got this little Japanese thing that adjusts the coilovers. That's probably worth losing half a point because we're pretty sure that doesn't work. <laughs> the steering wheel is a good way of kind of looking at what era cars, there's nothing on it, but when the car did come out, uh, it, it has cruise control, which I gather was a bit of a feature, and climate control. That's it. There's um, there's uh, it's got a horn. Uh, there's electric windows, and the only thing digital here um, that Subaru's put on there is your odometer over here. Um, it's stark. It's stark, man. It is a little bit. I'm gonna give it a um, I'm giving it a two, and I'm adding. Three for the Haltech, I'm giving it a five. <laughs> I'm giving it a six for its era, it was pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's basic now. I mean, we're not in that era anymore though. We we're gotta not. judge it for now. That's right. So do you wanna adjust your score, no, Mum? I'm a six, I'm giving it a six. I'd like to revise my score. I just remembered that Supergramps doesn't even have a head unit in it. <laughs> uh, and so I was scoring it as if you could actually listen to your favorite song, which you can't. So I'm taking another point off because okay. I remembered this has got full custom stereo, Dynamat everywhere, yep. Apple CarPlay, which is putting the points up, but in retrospect, that needs to be lower. So I'm putting that down to four. Martin, here we are. We're in the STI Lavorg. We're in the STI Lavorg. Now, technology in a car like this has come a long way. There's been leaps and bounds. Think about what existed. Look at the steering Think wheel. about what existed in 2003 compared to what existed in 2014 or 2017 when, when this car was actually made. 2003, if you had a gigabyte of RAM in your computer, you were baller. A gigabyte. That's one, one gigabyte. One gigabyte. Yeah, so Things have changed a little bit. Anyway, so where can I start? So firstly, we've got an engine start button. So straight away, we're in the future. We do have the full climate control. We've also got a dual climate control in case you're not that friendly with the person who's in the passenger MFD seat. MFD up there, look at that. What'd you call me? The MFD. It's a multifunctional display. Oh, that thing. I'm not calling you a... Oh, well, anyway, not so we've, yet. Got, we've got a boost gauge, we've got fuel economy, we've got calendars. This car will even tell you that it's your birthday and wish you a happy birthday when you set it in there. I'm not even joking. I remember because mine did that so and I'm cool. deducting a point for that shit. <laughs> you can add one if you want. No, I don't anyway, like Anyway, so we also have other adjustable menus. Obviously, we have this iDoing which we've put in which is awesome. So that has the CarPlay and Android Auto and maps and navigation and all this other cool stuff which is really good. The factory one that comes with is actually okay and you can get fancy Harman Kardon ones that are all tuned and actually sound pretty good. Uh, on the steering wheel, we've got a lot of buttons. It's a little bit robot but all these functions are customizable and especially with the eye doing, you can actually make them do whatever you want. And they're not here, haptic, really they're cool. actual real buttons. They're real buttons, golf people. owners triggered. We've also got a display up here, so you can go through and you can change it from speed and you can do your fuel economy and all the other information you might want to you see in front one. of you. And importantly, you also have your adjustable center diff. Now, Supergrams does have a six speed and it's got a, uh, a center diff in it, but it is not adjustable like this one is. This is called a DCCD system, it means you can change the way that the torque split works and sort of fine tune it, especially when you want to do donuts. As we saw with this car, does excellent donuts thanks to partly the technology. So I'm giving the technology in this car, I'm giving it a nine. Wow. I'm giving um, it a high score, I'm, man. I was going to give it an eight because it knows your birthday and says happy birthday. I'm taking one off for seven. But then I remembered that this car has uh, Alpine splits in the front. Uh, we installed speakers in the back. It's got sub. an amp and a sub, which I'm giving it an extra point. So uh, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Let's have a quick chat about safety. It's not something that a lot of performance car owners are often really into, but it is important because these cars are from two very different eras. That's right, and chassis development is a big one. Manufacturers are always pushing to have more rigidity and better uh, crash safety as well, which involves the kind of metal that they use and where they put it and how the car crumples and all those kind of things. Another big obvious one on our car as well is brakes. So Supergrams does have the STI big four pot Brembo brakes. That's why the wheels are different from the ones that it usually has because those wheels will not fit over these massive brakes. The Lavorg has it even better. It's got a six pot, which is even bigger and just basically has better stopping power. Now, when it comes to airbags, there's just way more in the Lavorg, and it's also worth pointing out that the safety rating, like the NCAP safety rating, is relevant for when the car came out, and if you retested a car now, it It'll wouldn't score nearly as highly. So if you put both of these cars side by side, the Lavorg is going to rate much better. The other big difference is that this one here is running Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. This is running Michelin Pilot Sport 5s. The Pilot Sport 5 is an evolution of the Pilot Sport 
before, but it has got better grip in the wet and better grip in the dry, and best of all, uh, increased lap performance as well. So that one is a no-brainer. Both excellent tyres, but the Pilot Sport 5 also nudges that ahead. So I'm going to give that an overall score of 8. I'm going to give that a 6. Yep, I would agree on the scores. And also, I would say, we're not talking about 50-year-old cars. Like, with, you know, th these, these do have quite good safety for what they are. They are well-built cars, and they do have a good reputation. But the Lavorg is definitely going to win in this case. Now one of the reasons I love station wagons is you get all the features of a sedan but you also get the utility and a whole lot more space. Now let's kick off with some specs about the Lavorg. Now this one, boot space, 522 litres, uh, compared to an Impreza which gets like 350 to 380, it's a huge difference. This one here also has a, what do you call these Martin, like a quick release thing to stick your roof pod on. Yep. So you basically kind of have your racks and your roof pod goes on there so you've got your boot space and that. Plus, you've got your tow bar here, and I think this has got about a 1.2 tonne towing capacity. There, Martin, I've thrown you the ball. What have you got to well, compete I with that? I actually think, in this case, Supergramps might have it. Now, it's got a slightly smaller boot. We're talking like, I think, 500, no, 460 litres, approximately, so a bit smaller than Lavorg. Even though, from the back windows, it actually looks bigger, it is smaller. Where Supergramps wins, though, it also can take a roof pod, even though I don't think the roof rails look as cool, because these things always cause me lots of problems, like trying to get them on and off and paint them and stuff. It's a similar idea, but it's not as refined as what the Lavorg has. What this does have is a higher towing capacity. Now, you'd barely be able to stick a Mini on a car trailer behind the Lavorg. If you had the right trailer, you might just scrape it in. Yeah. With this, you can do it legally. So, depending what engine you've got in it, you've got either from, it starts from a 1200 like the Lavorg, but if you get the bigger engine, the two and a half litre or the three litre, and in my case, 3.6 litre, that increases to 1800 kilos. Wow, now when it comes to utility, I would suggest that you get more utility from a higher towing capacity than you get from an extra 50 litres or so of boot space. Because Agreed. also, once you fold the seats down, yeah. there's enough room to sleep in there and carry everything you need. Six, so, eight. I'm going to go seven, nine. Oh, okay. Cool. So that's a, that's a win for Supergramps. When it comes to uniqueness and street cred, they are two aspects of car ownership that has huge currency in the aftermarket scene. Now, Supergramps was kind of built as a sleeper. It was what it's for. It looked like kind of a family wagon, the kind of boring, ugly thing that it is. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and um, that's what it did, but it did it really well. But when you pull up at a car meet, Martin, this is the car that's going to get the attention, isn't and, it? And the reasoning is, if you do know your Subarus, and let's be honest, there's a lot of people out there that do, you start to see subtle differences. You see the big fat STI guards, which did not come out on a Lavorg. You see the front end, which is just a bit different. Then you see the skirts, which are also just a little bit different. What I like about it is, it's subtle, but it's there and you notice it. Especially, well, the bit that's not subtle is those massive yellow brakes. And when you see that, you know something is going on. You can buy a Gen 4 Subaru that looks pretty much like that, even with those wheels, which was an option on that car. And from the outside, except for maybe the big front mount on the front, it could, it could be anything, which was also the purpose. So, I don't know, street cred, I'm leaning towards this. I really love the sleepiness of that, but this has a little bit more going on. I think when it comes to Mighty Car Mods fans, and I know there's a lot of OGs out there, so hello to all of you, because I know some people have been watching for almost 15 years. This is going to have a special place in people's hearts, but... When you're just rolling up to a meet, you look at this, looking from this angle, it's fat, it's low. I can see a boost gauge through the window. You've got TE37s on there. You're like, that's fancy. You see the Pilot Sport 5s. Okay, they obviously do some track days and stuff. Like, that is the car that's going to get some attention. So when it comes for pure street credness, and I'm just talking about the looks now, I'm going to yeah. give this a five because it looks like heaps that are out there. I'm giving that a nine, man. Like, it's just... It looks great. It's a tough one. That absolutely wins the sleeper category, and this absolutely wins sort of the standout street cred look. So that's, that's a hard. I'm going to five each because I don't actually want to choose. Now, this car, this is where it starts to get a little bit special under the bonnet. The whole point of this was to put the biggest engine that Subaru ever made into this sort of old grandpa wagon. So this is an EZ36. It came out in the big SUV Subaru Tribeca's. Uh, it looks a lot like its EZ30 cousin, but just a little bit chunkier. It's got dual AVCS, it's got it on the exhaust and the intake cam. It's got a big Garrett turbo there. And to keep it all in one piece, it does run ethanol plus some big injectors and some Haltech management with an Elite 2500. Ethanol is keeping this engine alive. This is knock limited. If you put petrol in it, you make basically no power because it will just detonate and that will kill the engine. Ethanol makes it run cooler, keeps more fuel volume, gets the turbo spooling up. It only runs between eight and 10 pounds of boost and makes 300 or kilowatts or 400 horsepower. But 
on the track, and I have found this a few times, after a couple of laps, it starts to get cranky. Everything gets hot, the oil temperature comes up, the water temperature comes up, and you've got to stay out of it. Now, luckily I haven't blown it up on the track, which is awesome, but I don't know if it's gonna be quite as reliable as that thing. Now, over here, unlike Super Gramps, which once he's had a go, he needs to have a bit of a rest before he can go again. Uh, the young buck over here can just jump straight back in and get to it. This here is the same, pretty much exactly the same engine and setup that I had in my white 2018 SDI, 2.5 litre, uh, four cylinder boxer engine, blah, 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 all the stuff that Subaru people already know. These are not really famous for making a whole lot of power. I know someone's gonna go, but my cousin made one with heaps of power. Pretty much the way that they respond to mods is you get an extra 50 to 70 kilowatts maybe. After that, you require turbos, you, you require all sorts of stuff. And what do we end up making with this? To This made 205 on petrol, on yep. ethanol with a bigger turbo. The engine itself is gonna run out of ability at about 270 kilowatts, absolute maximum. Yep. But that will do an 11. So, but the power then is not really comparable and how the power comes on is not comparable. Either. Super Gramps is just brutal. It's everywhere. The way it throws you in the seat and where that power comes on is incredible. But over here, this is kind of a good all round kind of power that can get the job done. And the difference is, and that I found in mine, you can just go to the track and drive around all day, just round and round and round and round without having any problems. Supergrams does need to come in for a rest every now and then just to cool down. Uh, if you've seen the build videos, got a top mount, we've got a GFB blow off valve, there's an intake and this one's running a tune. Um, that is kind of all the basics and an exhaust. Uh, so I think the important thing now, Marty, is to actually take them both out yep. onto the street, yep. go for a drive, and then actually decide whether the spiritual beauty that is the Bellissima of Supergramps can actually take the crown from what is the new guy on the street, the new kid on the block. The Lavorg is back all right, you know what I mean? Or something, I insert know, crummy I song know, here. I, I do know what you mean, but I kind of wish I did. Alrighty, so now we're gonna take both cars for a drive on the street. So we're just gonna see what they feel like, what the performance is like, yep. what the sound is like, what the smell is like, Martin. Straight away, the Lavorg has that very iconic boxer rumble that people like. Yes. It, you know, that, that real sort of rumbly Subaru sound. Um, it's kind of noisy, but not too noisy. It's That's comfortable. Good. The seats are good. The inside's nice, the aircon's working. It's a pretty good place to be. Rolling start from 30 k's an hour. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. It's, it's quick. It's all right. It's quick. Yeah. It's, it's when that power keeps going yes. that you really kind of lose your breath. But right where you're like, ah, that's where it kind of runs out, doesn't it? Absolutely. It doesn't have the massive torque hit. It's quite smooth and quite progressive. It's a small factory turbo. Yeah. So, but what you do get is when it comes on at three grand, it holds it. It just holds that power for until basically six, six and a half thousand RPM. Yes. It just keeps pulling and it's kind of what you want for a street car on the road. Um, but it's trying to make up for the deficiencies in terms of capacity yeah. compared to something like Super Grants. Yeah. But it, it is a nice place to be. It feels modern. It feels good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely, there's a little bit of lag at That'd the be, front, yeah. which is like when you plant your foot, you've got a second of kind of the weight, like the breath in. But then once it goes, you do get a good push in your seat. I just wish that push went for longer, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or went harder. And the other thing is this car is on petrol. So there's going to be limitations there compared to running something on ethanol, the fuel and how much power you can extract. But this is what a lot of and most EJ25 Subarus, when they've got a stock engine, they pretty much feel like this. Yeah. This is yeah. it. And it's good. Is it mind blowing or face melting? No, but it is solid. Yeah. In terms of the ride, it feels firm, it feels planted, it feels um, confidence inspiring, yeah. I guess you could say, that combination of um, wheel, tyre, brake and suspension. Um, it's a nice place to be. You can drive around every day. We didn't really lose anything when we went from Lavorg to all the STI stuff either. Like, it's a bit noisier because it's got a bigger exhaust on it. And it's a little bit firmer because it's got springs in it and sway bar links and stuff like that. But not to the point where you've ruined it. Yeah. So it's still a very usable car. You could put someone in it who had no idea about cars and they go, oh yeah, cool. It's a thing. Oh, it's a bit noisy back here. But aside from that, it's just really nice to be in. So for the next test, Martin, tunnel run. <laughs> the all important tunnel run test. Here we go. It's all right. It's okay. We got, you know? room, we got room for one more. We got room okay. for one more. Here right. we go. Here we go. It's pretty good. I, I mean, look. It's all right. I've gone through that tunnel in a VTEC Mini on full song. 
<laughs> I've gone through that tunnel in an RS3 with an exhaust. Yeah. Gone through that tunnel in a Lotus. Yeah. So I got a fairly high benchmark okay. of tunnel run sound. All right. That was mediocre at were best. You, were you towing anything? No. Okay. No. Well, neither are we. What? So that's a quick straight drive in the STI Lavorg. Now it's time to jump into the granddaddy Supergramps. And everybody, now we are in Supergramps to take it for a drive. See how granddaddy rolls. <laughs> All right, here we go. Rolling start, 30Ks an hour. Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Oh, that is face melting. <laughs> it's so good. Holy moly. It's so good. Ethanol, big cubes, big turbo. Actually, a little turbo for what it is, but just, just hangs on, doesn't it? It knocks your block off, man. It's like great. your breath is just pressed out of you. I don't even... I'm even shifting before the hard red line because it's like, it's just got power everywhere. When you drop it back to the next gear, it still goes. That is amazing. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? And, and you know what? So cool. I know that I gave its interior a really low score and I stand by that in terms of the broken stuff yes. or whatever. Yeah. But these seats in this car, it's actually a really nice place it's to be. It's pretty good. It's pretty I good. Actually think it's, I actually think it's nicer than the Lavoie. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I attribute a lot of that to the Recaros, but also it just... I don't know, maybe I'm just more comfortable with it because it's a bit old and festy like I am. <laughs> well, straight away, the, the throttle mapping I love, it's got the Haltech in it. We've been, I've actually tweaked the throttle mapping over the time I've owned the car to have it exactly how I like it. So it's a little bit doughy down the bottom, which makes it easy to putt around and easy to control the clutch. But then when you're into it, you get this really, really snappy response, which I like. The brakes don't feel anywhere as good as the Lavorg brakes. The Lavorg brakes are some of the best I've ever driven with, ever. They feel so good and sharp and really bitey and they have good stopping power. The clutch is a bit heavier in this car because it is a heavier like aftermarket clutch than what's in the other one. Um, but when you're cruising down the highway, it's not that different, is it really? No. It sounds no. different. It's a bit noisier, but not necessarily bad. It's a different kind of noisy. Yeah. So this is this doesn't have any drone at all. The Lavorg has a little bit, not much. It's it fine, you can live with it. Yep. But this here. It's almost at a lower pitch, so it's not as audible, but it's more a feel thing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. like you can feel, it's like you can feel the power of the decibels without hearing it. It's a, it's a, yes. it's strange, but it's good. It feels weighty. It does feel good. The steering is, to be honest, a bit vague. It kind of always has been. Again, this is supposed to be more of a luxury car than a sports car, and so the steering's quite light, which is good when you're parking. But when you're driving and driving fast, it's, it's somewhat vague. Uh -huh. um, compared to the other car and I feel I would also attribute that to like development of the chassis as well and being the other, fact the other one is basically an STI which yeah. is always about being a sports car and this was about being a Grand Tourer which yeah. is what we're doing here. Well one's designed to be sharp and the other's designed to be soft quite literally you know. Exactly, yeah. But I'm in sixth gear right now just cruising around at 100 like pick whatever gear you want fifth gear puts at 100 puts you at about 3000 rpm which is pretty much where your power bend starts and so you roll that on in any gear and you're really moving, like you it can feel goes. it straight away. Yeah, yeah. So hang around in six gear. The six speed is basically the same thing, except this doesn't have the adjustable diff. Uh, the ratio is very similar as well. So it's amazing how well that engine just bolted in and worked. It was a really, really good result for the recipe. Tunnel run! Tunnel run! Drop it back a gear. Oh, back another, down. mate. Going back another. Here we go. Yes. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> it's so good. Ah, oh, that's just that's that's ridiculously good. Far out. I can feel it. I can hear oh, it. Dude. I can taste you can it. Smell I can it. smell it. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Man, it's not, it's just not about the numbers, is it? It's not all about the numbers because this numbers. is just it's got some spice to it that yep. you just you can't quite work out what it is in the recipe. It's something that is greater and more magical than just the core ingredients, you know? Yep. Supergramps, you absolute weapon. So that there is the two cars. We got Supergramps, we've got the STI Lavorg. What's the conclusion? Well, people, if you just look at the numbers, the STI swapped Lavorg has it hands down. Like it's just kind of better at almost absolutely everything. But would you judge a friendship by the numbers, Martin? Would you give them a rating? Would you give your friends a rating? Would you say, you know, it's all about whether you bought me dinner, how generous you are, how funny you are? Like, would you rate someone like that? I'd give you a nine. No, you wouldn't. You, you, you I don't, mean, no, I wouldn't. You I don't would. rate your you friends, rate is what I'm friends. saying, because sometimes there's something 
ethereal. Is that the word? There's, so there's something that's more than the sum of its parts. Yes. And as such, yep. regardless of the numbers, remove the analytical mind for a second and just look at the spirit of what the thing is. I am absolutely crowning <laughs> Super Gramps as the winner, the winner. Which is why, which is why this it happened. is going to be immortalized in the poster right there. Signed and sent to you anywhere in the world. Marty, what absolutely. do you reckon, mate? Uh, look, you know what? This thing, I really, really, really enjoying driving this thing around as I really, really enjoyed driving this thing around for the last eight, eight years. Ages. It's been a really, really long thing. I love this car. We've driven it, we've raced it in so many different cars, we've battled against everything. It has been broken once or twice, but it has always come back for more. It still looks great. It was a real, like a ground up build, and I really learned a lot during that process, which I was able to apply when we did this because Subaru Lego. But there's something about this, and I'm going to put it down to two things. The sound of it, uh -huh. which I think is one of the best sounding cars I've ever driven or owned, and yep. a lot of people that jump in it agree. I've been motoring journalists that jump in this and be like, sounds like a Porsche. Sounds better than Sounds Porsche. better. Um, Take that. And so I put that down to the engine. The combination of the engine, the turbo setup, the way the exhaust works, the way the intake works, the way the intercooler works, the it's dosing noisy, on. the way the power comes on, that power band. There's no replacement for displacement. 3.6 litres is huge in a flat six engine. It's unique. And I just think that absolutely makes the car. Oh, I, I, I agree. And that is the thing. Numbers aside, the sound of that, the feel of that, it is just not replicatable. Now, let's just be honest for a second. If you could get that, you could get the spirit of all of this. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. <laughs> if you could get all of that and somehow put it into there, yeah. you would have the ultimate car. Yeah. You would, I mean, that's that's not possible though, is it, I mean, that's not a thing. Surely that's not a thing, is it? Like, imagine if you could get that, the spirit of that performance. I mean, I'm just, just imagine it, people. Right now, just take a minute. Close your eyes and imagine if that was possible. Then, I mean, can you imagine, Martin? Can what you if, imagine? What if I I'm told gonna close you? my eyes. Yes. What if I told Just you? Speak to me, whisper to me. I'll show you.